one. There's only one way to come out of a Levi, and that's digging on Levi. Oh, wow. A hop to the real ones, a hop, you know, for the energy that we're all sharing through our framer and our shaper, putting it all together, digging on it in real time, putting the investigation together, seeing what it's worth, digging on the value of a diamond. To all the brothers and the sisters rocking, putting it down wherever you're putting it down, witnessing wherever you're witnessing, a high for you, the wada, for all the tribe, man, all the squad, all the ether squad, man, season three has popped off. In Yapa style, in Yapa fashion, we're being framed and shaped. And we're, we're coming together, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it's, it's just dope to see new, new, you know, well, I guess the word new is relative, but I can say it feels great to witness the connection. You know what I mean? We got a, <clears throat> a brand, uh, a fresh member, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the, and the ether and the ether squad, my bro. I don't know what Nick be on, you know. Cause Nick be on. So you can catch him every Tuesday, eight o'clock Pacific. You know, it's um a beautiful show called Choosing Immunity. And that's just a brand new show for season three. In the ether. Just putting the wave together. And that's following the Templar. A hop to the Templar. And he's following. KB the hijacker says on on Tuesday before we get to the Kalelus and the draconology that I that I put down, you know. So that's just Tuesday. That's just Tuesday. If you want to know how we rock all the other days, go get the new uh, schedule. Matter of fact, click the link below. I'm going to put the link below so you got the new TDR schedule. Download the app ASAP. We don't know how long they're going to let us rock. You know what I mean? I'm getting these emails that... <clears throat> That whatever Google Play or whatever might start censoring their stuff more. So I, I don't know how long they're going to let us even have an app, man. So get the drop, man. You know what I mean? Don't wait for a year from now. We might be on some, we might be on our land just digging on it a year from now. This is not something so, oh, in 10 years, you want to do this. We don't really have that type of 10 year plan. We just want freedom, man. We, don't, we want freedom for. Israel, everywhere you are, you know what I'm saying? We want freedom for our tribe. When our tribe is free, the whole world is cool. When our tribe is free, the whole world is cool, man. But when, when we're in captivity, the whole world goes to, you know, this type of reconstruction here, you know. That's all we say. So, Aha for the Water Drop Nation. There's only one way to come out of a Levi. And that's digging on Levi. Leviathan, man. And this is a link I wanted to share as I was recording Draconology, the premiere of Draconology. You get that every Tuesday. And it's new time slot at 9 o'clock. And the Kalelus is at 10 o'clock now on Tuesday. And all these are recordings, you know what I mean, um, that the tribe does, you know what I mean? Just they might be recording on their phone or something, but they're reading a book or they're, you know, you know, kicking something pertinent. And it's just great to see the tribe grow, man. You know, great to see the, great to feel the growth, feel the vibrations. Kawaki is providing us with the water, man. The water continues, continues. Right now I have about, about nine, I do about nine uh, shows in the ether every week, man. So <laughs> I do a lot of replays because of that. <laughs> And uh, I genuinely try to keep them a little short because of that, too, because I might have to record two or three at a time. Um, you know what I'm saying? But the tribe, man, I mean, Chef Candy has two. Ty Battle has two. You know what I'm saying? Phoenix Khan and man, Phoenix Nadia Kappa Khan, they, they both have a show apiece, but that's basically two shows. So we got multitasking going on in the ether. And during that multitask investigation, this came up, Leviathan. 
And, uh, you know, this is, you know, kind of a run-in-the-mill, you know, perspective in a sense. But I just want to dig on Leviathan because he does bring up some, you know, great imagery. And I want to take that into uh, Numbers 21. And we're going to close out in 2nd Baruch. Love to come fresh, man. The water continues. We dropped this in a copper thread. And uh, it's just more great imagery, man, for you to imagine your reality, man, not the reconstruction. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? So let's get the, you know, let's get a piece of this. Leviathan, the cop, <laughs> the fire breathing dragon, the copper color fire, fire breathing dragon. All right, Job 31, right? Let's just, uh, wow, let's, let's take it slow. Can thou draw out Leviathan with the hook or his tongue with the core, which thou let's down? Can you put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through, through with a horn? with a thorn so can you bore his jaw through with a thorn wow will he make supplications unto you will he speak soft words unto you will he i mean will leviathan speak soft words unto you now just think about those first three lines man let's think about those first three lines Now, can you imagine fishing and pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging and finally out of the water, a 24 foot long dino or dragon comes out the water with a finish hook stuck in his mouth and a line going through to your fishing pole. First of all, you, you're not going to be using that strong of a fishing line. Second, I doubt if he'll be coming out because of your strength. Whatever this dragon is, man, whatever this animal is, he'll be too strong for you to do anything to make him come out. So if you can get the big fella out the water, you think he'll be in the mood to talk with you, man? You think Leviathan want to talk to you? You just put... You just put a hook through his mouth. You know, back to these cephali, right? Back to these cephali. Think about these cephali like, uh, the pit bull, right? The pit bull. Now, if it's not your pit bull, you might not want to play with it, right? Same thing with Leviathan and Hawa or you and your dragon. If it's not your dragon, you might not want to mess with it. It's not your dragon. <laughs> Got it? So imagine you went and played with somebody else's pit bull and you didn't even come nice, man. Like you just came in and started jamming it up, piercing it, right? Piercing it through the mouth. You got the water. So imagine you just pierced it through the mouth. You think that pit bull want to talk nice to you? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Can you draw out Leviathan with the hook or his tongue with the cord? which thou lets down. Can thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make any, will he make many supplications unto you? Will he speak soft words unto you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will thou take a servant for him forever? 
take him a servant forever? Will he be your dog? Will he be your dragon? Will thou play with him as with a bird? And will you bind him for thy maidens? Since perhaps play with him as a bird, that would be some rough playing. <laughs> Maybe you could tie him up and take him to your daughter. How many of you will be willing to take home a dragon for your kids to play with? <laughs> Probably not many. So whatever this is, it's not going to be tamed by man. Because he ain't whispering no sweet, soft words <laughs> unto you. Let's go to verse 14. Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. So I don't think about no dinosaur with these scales, do you? Do you, man? So when we talk dragons, we talk dragons because the creator's talking dragons. <laughs> we talk dragon because the creator talked dragons. Then you can go on and see the connection with the seraphim and the angels. Get all that drop. Get all the drop in the past drop that we dropped. So you can connect the angels and the dragons. We will be continuing with our investigation on that. Do you know any dinosaurs with scales, man? Impenetrable scales? Well, if you do, they're called dragons, not dinos. His scales are his pride, shut up together as a closed seal. One is so near to the other that no air can breathe between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. So whatever this thing is, man, you cannot open his mouth if you wanted to. And if you did, you'd be looking at a whole bunch of terrible teeth. It also says that this thing also has scales. That is his pride, his assurance. Nothing is going to get through those scales and kill him. That this is bound tight. So whatever this animal is, it's got a lot of terrible teeth and strong armored scales. Now listen up. 18. We're in Job 41 verse 18. By his nestings a light does shine, and his, his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Now the only comparisons we got to anything today that can breathe fire, that we, uh, you know, in conventional science, is uh, this type of be beetle, this type of beetle that we dropped on before that ignites it. Shoots out some type of hydrogen, something mixed with something else to spark flames. So this is li living proof that the creator does create, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, uh, creatures that breathe fire. All right. <laughs> Don't let the fire, you know, mess you up, man. All right. Now you can connect Psalms 18 when the creator's being described. You know, he hears David, David mourning and he. He, in his wrath towards David's enemies, he comes down on the wings of the wind, it says, breathing fire out of his mouth, smoke out of his nose. Are we talking about a man breathing fire or a fire breathing super dragon, right? At least that's one of the forms. Because a dragon has no form. It's everything and nothing, right? The number nine is the dragon, Khan. Huh? Enough to I don't know what Nick B on, who was just dropping this in his season three premiere. Choosing immunity Tuesdays, eight o'clock Pacific, only at 432thedrop.com. <laughs> Drop squad, let go. So we got this dragon, Leviathan. Whether you talk water dragon. Or a giant sea fish, as it says in the etymology, when you look it up in Etymon, Etymon Online. 
the etymology of dragon is seen clearly also says a giant sea fish. So when you think dragons, think about the sea fish too. The water. So its eyelids are like that of the morning, right? And that's what we got before the etymology that it says the one with the deadly glance. Remember the one with the deadly glance. Out of his mouth goes burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goes smoke. <laughs> As with the seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindles coals. A flame goes out of his mouth. Yeah. Can you imagine something this big breathing fire with these, you know, super eyes? <laughs> he could probably fire beam you through his eyes, man. I want to point out that the word Nessings, the words, the word Nessings, the word is used only one time in the Bible. In fact, it's about the only time it's used anywhere, the Hebrew word. So this is about the only time they'll see this, this, this Hebrew word that they got it from literally means breath, air, out of nose. When the King James translators got to the word, they realized there wasn't an English equivalent, so they invented a new word. <laughs> it's called, it's kind of like sneezing, but not, so they call it nessings. <laughs> so this word nessings, a made up word to try to get an understanding of what the Hebrew word was saying, which meant breath, air, out of his name. By his nestings, by his breath, his air out of his nose. A light does shine in his eyes. So even by breathing, you see a light shining. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning, right? Eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Perhaps in the literal sense, the one with the deadly glance. I can't make this shit up, man. Once you got it, once you got it, you got it all. You know what I mean? Once mama gives you it, she gives you it all. Because you got to see clearly. It's not that hard, man. Once you see it, you see it, man. It becomes visible. I'm just talking dragon. I'm just talking dragon, man. Giant sea fish. Huh? <laughs> it gives revelations, you know, that whole war with the dragon, a whole other spin right a whole other reality once you see phantoms and duplications and you go to the OG and then you can get the real drop about the angel Michael going up against Leviathan and wanting no part of this giant sea fish this is Hawa's play thing you know he has a lot of power some could say he has more power than <laughs> many angels combined this is Hawa's dragon man the angel Michael didn't want no part of this. <laughs> no angel wants a part of Leviathan. Nothing wants Le nothing wants a part of Leviathan. Not even Behemoth wanted a part of Leviathan. But that was the only uh, competition. That was the only competition. When you get out of a Levi, the only proper way to Levi up, to levitate, is to dig on Leviathan, man. <laughs> the priest, right? The Levi's, right? Priest, right?
On the fifth day of creation, Hawa took fire and water, and out of these two elements, he made the fish of the sea. So the fish of the sea are fire and water. The animals in the water are much more numerous than those on land. For every species on land except only the weasel, there is a corresponding species in the water. Everything on land has a corresponding species in the water. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. What about mankind, huh? What about man? Is there a corresponding species in the water to man? Are we just talking mermaid? Except the weasel. That's interesting. Only the weasel, you know, is, is unique to the land. The ruler over the sea animals, right? The giant sea fish is Leviathan. So again, when we talk about that good old serpent, oh, the good old serpent. The good old serpent, giant sea fish. So the serpent that, remember, Sinus of Folly, the dog headed man, the fox is the serpent. So the serpent don't look like dragon. This is what they're trying to, you know, reconstruct in our minds, right? That the serpent is the dragon, right? But the serpent is the fox. The jackal is the serpent. The Anubis is the serpent. The Thoth is the serpent. The trickster. Duality. So now that we can rule out Leviathan as the serpent. You're just digging on the giant sea fish. But over and over again, they kept trying to use Leviathan to be the devil. And that's why you had the reflection and revelations when you have Michael going up against this, this dragon. You know, you can't look at that today and just say, oh, okay, this is what's going on. This is the prophecy. All this shit was reconstructed from something, from an original source. Now you can see clearly and said, did the angel Michael go up against Leviathan? Or will the angel Michael go up against Leviathan? Did it happen before? Did it happen again? Is it happening? Is it all happening? Past and present and all that? <laughs> Was Leviathan sea monster, sea serpent, form of Satan? Just like the other dragon in Revelations, right? To wind, to turn, to twist. LWH, well, how can that be? We're just talking Levi. Tribe of Levi. <laughs> Leah, lawyer, like lawyer almost, huh? Re? Is that where they get law, right? Law. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, they're just using reflections and they put, they substitute this in for the Satan, the adversary, the trickster. Now it becomes, oh, good old Leviathan. That, and what happens with Levi, man? What happens with Levi, man? You remember we got this right here. You know, to, you know, you know, get all this. Originally he was created male and female like the other animals. When it appeared that a pair of these monsters might annihilate the whole earth with their united strength, God killed the female. Remember that female dragon in the other, is it Sumerian Tales? Or that was also, that, that was supposed to be killed. It's a female dragon. Uh, was it Red Hive? Or, you know what I mean? So you got this female dragon that's killed. Same thing. You know, is, is it something? Is it nothing? God killed the female, so enormous is Leviathan that to quench his thirst, he needs all the water that flows from the in, from the Jordan into the sea. Remember, we keep seeing these oceans disappear, these mass, you know, uh, waterways just empty out of nowhere. <laughs> his food consists of fish which go between his jaws on their own accord. Now, skipping down, his fins radiate brilliant light. The very sun is obscured by it, and also his eyes shed such splendor that frequently the sea is illuminated suddenly by his what? His eyes 
shed such splendor, brilliance. We're going to get on this splendor. We're going to talk about splendor as it relates to the Naga, splendor as it relates to the copper color, you know, so-called Negro, black, black Americans, right? Your splendor. We're going to talk about your regal nature and you returning to your splendor. But right now we're just talking about his eyes, his eyes, his eyes, his what? Oh, man. We're talking about the one with the deadly glance, his eyes, right? His eyes. Before we talked about his eyelids, you know. Oh, yeah, that was in the. No, not there, not there. Not yet. No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Back to our original link. I mean, we just surfing the wave of Leviathan. <laughs> it gets a little linky. It gets a little linky. Uh, that's Job 41, verse 18. By his nestings, right? Or his, uh, his breath, his air, a light does shine. And his eyes, here we go, right out the script. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps. Sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go smoke. As out of the seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. Dragon. Giant sea fish. Eyelids, right? The one with the deadly glance. His fins radiate bright light. The very sun is obscured by it. He, he, he's brighter than the sun. <laughs> and his eyes shed such splendor that frequently the sea is illuminated suddenly by it. No wonder that, what th that this marvelous beast is the plaything of Awa. This is his plaything or pet or, or his, you know, his pet dragon, whatever you want to call it, man, right? Or guardian, right? In whom he takes his pastime. There is but one thing that makes Leviathan repulsive, his foul smell, which is so strong that if it penetrates there, thither, it would render paradise itself an impossible abode. That's why he's kept under the water. <laughs> Come on, man. This shit starts to make sense. Because if he comes out, it's going to be so bad, man. It's going to be so bad on the smell, man. Now, check it. The real purpose of Leviathan is to be served up as a dainty to the pious, to the righteous in the world to come. The female was put into brine as soon as she was killed to be preserved against the time when her flesh would be needed. The male is destined to offer a delectable sight to all beholders before he is consumed. So you're eating, you're eating electricity, right? And what does that got to do with the manna, with the manna? Because he's electricity, literally, right? When his last hour arrives, Hawa will summon the angels. Here we go with Michael and the angels in Revelations. Let's go to enter into combat with the monster. But no sooner will Leviathan cast his glance at them that they will flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle. Cast his glance, right? The one with the deadly glance. Back to the script. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. For him to open his eyes is like the sun rising, man. The one with the deadly glance. He can use it as a weapon, just like in the sci-fi, you know what I mean? 
animated, you know, you you, you see this X Men, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> this ain't no play, play. So these angels are summoned into battle, all right? And this is when it really starts to draw on the story of Revelations. But no sooner this big old dragon, super dragon, super dragon, all right, <laughs> looks at him with his deadly glance, and they say, man, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> They flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle. They will return to the charge with swords. Must be some super swords. But in vain, for his scales can break back still like straw. They will be equally unsuccessful when they attempt to hit him with, by throwing darts and slinging stones. Must be some super stones or missiles, right? Oh, there we go. Such missiles will rebound without leaving the least impression on his body. So they hit him with everything they had. The angels of Hawa, the angels of the creator, hit his plaything, his dragon, with everything they had. And you know what? You know the most I got to be sitting back like, man, I created one tough mofo. You know what I mean? <laughs> My dragon is taking, is taking everything they got. Matter of fact, they didn't have enough. It says disheartened. The angels will give up the combat and Hawa will command Leviathan and Bima to enter into a duel with each other. So now he has to go up against the other super duper dragon, right? The issue will be that both will drop dead. Bima slaughtered by a blow of Leviathan's thins, fins and Leviathan killed by a lash of Bima's tail. And, uh, you know, check out Mud Fossil University. You got some drops showing that this already happened. Will it happen again? <laughs> From the skins of Leviathan, Hawa will construct tents to shelter companies of the pious while they enjoy the dishes made of his flesh. And then we said tents. Tents. What does this remind us of, man? What does this remind us of, man? Get up Isaiah 40. You know, we're just digging on the script, man. I always enjoy the script. There's, there's so much drop to connect to it. So whenever we're digging on, you know, whether it's Preston John or Dragons, it's always about the script. Because you can't throw the babies out with the bath water. I'm not one of those folks that wake up or whatever you would call it, waking up and say, oh, man, well, I'm going to throw this whole book out because white man must have gave us this. Nah, I go back into the paleo, back into the picto and connect it with the indigenous truth and see, whoa, this real drop here. They didn't create shit. All they did was remix. So you got to reverse, reverse, reverse the spell, man, reverse the curse. Diamonds on my neck, right? <laughs> on the left side, huh? Now remember, we're just talking the tent. Leviathan is now being spread out like a tent, right? From the skin of Leviathan, Hawa will construct tents to shelter companies of the righteous, pious, while they enjoy the dishes made of his flesh, the amount assigned to each of the righteous pious will be in proportion to his deserts or his lands or his, his lot. And none will envy or begrudge the other his better share. No more jealousy over the lots, over the share. What is left of Leviathan skin will be what? Stretched, I can't make this up, man. Stretched out over Jerusalem as a canopy, man. Or a tent, right? Hawa will construct tents. And now we got the visual that his skin, 
Remember how tough his skin is? Remember how impenetrable? Remember how they were shooting missiles and it was just rebounding without leaving the least impression on his body? Think about how they were shooting up all these missiles. You know what I mean? Operation, was it fishbowl or whatever the case is? They were just blasting the firmament, blasting the firmament, blasting the firmament, blasting away, right? Trying to get through, shooting missiles that just rebounded. And then it started getting clear. I said, if this did already happen, like Mud Fossil University is breaking down, he's, he's showing this huge dragon, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, all across the northern so-called Africa, you know, and then you got Behemoth right there. You got this, you know, with with her fins. I mean, it's all right there. Definitely something looked like it went down, and this dragon is huge, man. It takes up the whole northern Africa, man. <laughs> now think, now with the skins of this dragon, this huge dragon, was it used as the firmament not just his skin maybe the female too right was his skin used as the firmament when when Hawa met it out the firmament i beat it out with my right hand he's using the flesh for the righteous did he also use his skin leviathan skin as a canopy What is left of Leviathan skin will be stretched out over Jerusalem as a canopy. We're just surfing away. We're just surfing away. Canopy, tent. Where else do we see tent, canopy, stretched out? Let's go back to the script. So y'all know this ain't no play play. Isaiah 40, 22. It is he that sits above the circle of the earth, right? This is, um, you know, when a lot of, a lot of folks that think they spinning on balls, you know what I mean? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. They think they're on a ball, so they use this to say, look, you're on a ball. See, Hawa sits on the circle of the earth. You know, there's a different Hebrew verb for circle and ball, right? Above the circle of the earth. So you really have this Hebrew word, um, karuk, or something like that, karuk. And it just... Is explaining roundness. It's not saying a sphere or roundness, such as a round firmament. But let's keep going. And the inhabitants thereof are grasshoppers. So Hawaz above the firmament, this round firmament that stretch out the heavens as a curtain. So he sits above the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch, stretches, stretch, stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a what? As a what? 